ladies and gentlemen we have been working all day and now it's after work i'm joe welcome back to that nintendo show your weekly nintendo news show here on twitch.tv slash joe after work every week uh every every weekday no no <laughs> every weekend we come here live on twitch 7 30 8 p.m somewhere around that time we go live next day it goes up on twitch i mean next day it goes up on youtube i am messing up this intro so bad but it's all good it goes up on youtube next day full video and also soundcloud and itunes i'm working on google play and trying to see if there's anywhere else i can get that up there without having to you know pay an exorbitant amount for any of that stuff um some housekeeping notes that we've got before we get started with today's show. Um, I put up a t-shirt, finally. I've been talking about this for a little bit. <laughs> um, right now it's the retro 8-bit logo that I use on my channel that you guys see right here to the right the right of me. You're right? Yeah, yeah, the right of me, I guess. It gets confusing because this is my left on the camera and in real life, well, that is really where the you guys, that, that's poor for audio. But anyway, yes, um, shirt is up. It's over on uh, t tchip.com slash Joe After Work 8 bit is the full link. I'll leave that in the chat for you guys. And I'll also leave that in the uh, description of the YouTube video and the uh, podcast descriptions just in case you guys are interested. Boom, there you go. And also, you guys head on over to youtube.com slash Joe After Work. If you miss anything, all my videos, all my playthroughs are up here and pretty damn organized, I gotta say. Your Nintendo Spotlight, every episode of that Nintendo show and the After Work show, um, all our Twitch live streams are starting to go up over the last couple weeks now in its entirety after the stream's end. Every playthrough that I have done, Nintendo related, is here in alphabetical order, I might add, and then some other stuff, unboxings and whatnot that I put into a separate section, and all our popular stuff, which is crazy that this dementium video is <laughs> the highest viewed video on the channel we're almost at 900 subs which is crazy 887 that is nuts and that's all to you guys thank you so much for the support um before we get into the news the pipeline i um i've been playing i've been playing a couple of things so last week i was saying we finished monster hunter stories we finished dementium um there's like one one last final thing I need to do in Monster Hunter Stories, but in terms of the story, it is complete. Um, we, we got the credit roll on that. Uh, I picked up Wolverblade. We did a Nintendo Spotlight on that. We did, I did a lot of Nintendo Spotlight episodes last week. Um, some of them have been recorded uh, pre uh, like prior to uh, them go. Sorry, that didn't even make any sense. I recorded them instead of doing live streams on a few of them just so I could catch up because there's been so many indie games that have come out. It's been insane. Um, Blue, what's going on, dude? Uh, this is our podcast show, so I, I jump into the chat every now and again, um, just not as often as I do with normal gameplay videos that I do on the channel here. Um, so forgive me if I don't jump into the chat as often over this next hour. But yeah, um, Wolverblade, I'm really digging tiny barbarian dx um thank you again uh nicholas for the review copy and i purchased the game to show my support right there which is really dope because it comes with a freaking old school instruction booklet how dope is that like this is like game boy day status right here and it comes with this little bag with the uh tiny barbarian thing and the pin inside where our hero is riding a bee this, uh, sorry, not a pin. It's actually a keychain, so I may actually have to put this on house keys if and when I ever get those. Uh, <laughs> and, oh yeah, that's right. The other part is the cover itself has two different versions of it. Boom and boom right there. So I this is the one that you get when you uh, purchase the game. I flip it over to this one. This one looks pretty cool. But um, Tiny Barbarian DX uh, really... Uh, it spikes in difficulty at points, but it's a uh, it's a two D platformer that takes notes from like Castlevania and some of your older NES games for sure. But Castlevania is probably the one that I felt like it related to the most. And it's not quite sixteen bit, but it's not quite eight bit either. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's a uh, your character is a full on sprite, but and so are the enemies as well. But your backgrounds are all in like that 8-bit 16-bit realm like in between like it doesn't seem like it's quite there yet 
but it uses colors as well that those consoles cannot process. So that's the, that's the other thing about it too. Uh, the soundtrack is amazing. Uh, I I that Nintendo Spotlight episode is up as well, and <clears throat> and it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. But uh, let me jump into chat and I will uh, and we'll get started with the pipeline next. Dope. Joe, this is supposed to be a PG stream. What are you telling these kids? Yo, this guy. X-Force, how you doing, bro? What is up, everybody? Everyone, everyone jumping in. Let's get right into the pipeline as soon as this, you know, this will probably take a while to load up. Boom. All right, we're in the pipeline now. And let's get things started. We've got some rumblings, some rumors. We're going to go to Rumor Mill over at Nintendo Life. And I got to give shout outs to my boy Nintendo Guru. Nintendo Guru um shout outs to him he talked about he did an episode on this sh on his one of his shows that he does called if we ran nintendo over on his channel give him a hit give him a sub over there youtube.com slash nintendo guru and he did a whole episode with his boy uh sean about the like what an what an ideal game boy classic would be and then the next day this comes out and everything is everyone is talking about it but meanwhile he did it the day before <laughs> i was like oh man like talk about being like on the nose of something and dude if you guys can show him some love please give him the love and then lo we sent you over here but yeah rumors swirl around about a game boy classic trademark but don't get too excited thomas whitehead here we go super nintendo classic snes mini cool little snes Whatever you call it, it'll only it only arrived recently, but naturally some are already wondering about the next big thing. We're already we've already had previous speculation about a potential N64 mini, which not unreasonably drew on similarity re relevant EU trademarks for Switch, NES, and SNES. Now you'll have plenty of plenty referring to a first Game Boy trademark out of Japan picked up by a a bot account that automatically posts these filings. It was apparently made on the 15th of September. And here you go, trademark bot on Twitter. And I guess this gets translated in from Japanese. 501 classification of goods and services, designated goods or designated services. Number nine programs for home video mer uh, game machine storage media storing programs for home video game machines. Programs for portable electronic game machines, a storage medium in which a program for a portable electronic, all this yada 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 stuff. Uh, class 14 key uh, key ring charm for key holder, me memorial cup, memorial card, commemorative coin. Uh, that sounds interesting, actually. Precious metal made badge, necktie pin, necklace, brooches, collar pin, decorative item, decorative pin. Class 18 bag class. What is happening here? What is going on? Um, a pen type data input device for a computer, a charger for a smartphone, a headphone, an earphone, a rechargeable battery, a rechargeable battery for a smartphone. Interesting. This trademark is somewhat different from those in the past that pointed to SNES Classic and equivalent for N64, as it seems more generic. Um, as you can see... It's securing the look and brand for a broad range of products. Intriguingly, on the same date, a filing was made by the European Union Intellectual Property Office for Nintendo Game Boy Select AB, uh, Select Star AB, specifying various accessories but no electronic products under goods and services. Huh. Could these filings be a part of securing trademarks and clearing the way for Game Boy Classic in the future? Absolutely. Is it proof that such a thing is happening? No. Uh, ultimately, we suggest you don't take this as a cast iron pointer that the Game Boy Classic is being in the works. Nevertheless, it would be no surprise if such a device happens. It sell like hotcakes. Could be rel relatively cheap for those to produce for Nintendo to produce. So before we jump in, I see uh, everyone is going nuts over something here. Uh, <laughs> what is happening? Anyway, before before we move on to the next thing, I think this is pretty interesting. Um, I. I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere down the road we get something like this. Um, it would be it'd be great if we can see a portable version of one of Nintendo's older consoles. Personally, for me, I would love to get the GBA going, but hey, uh, that's probably f uh, <laughs> years and years down the road. Uh, and especially with the trademark rumors that we heard earlier in the summer that we reported here as well, the uh, N64 
for controller being trademarked out in Europe as well. And it seems like, again, this is another European trademark uh, that's been happening, um, which is interesting. This seems like this would be different from the traditional co um, mini consoles that we've seen so far in the NES and the SNES. The Game Boy one seems like it might be portable and have portable chargers from the description here of what's going on in the classifications with the uh, smart uh, battery for smartphone charger for smartphone so it seems like it's probably going to go along the lines of um still micro usb but a micro usb phone charger similar to like to like what the Sam don't this didn't the samsung's used to use that at one point or uh any of those android phones i remember my first droid phone had done that when i uh when i had one whatever the first droid was boom Holy crap, Lucius, dude, with the sub? Hold up, I'm going to show you some love after this, a after we get through this show. But dude, thank you for that sub. What? Yo, can we get some love for Lucius80 up in there? Can we get some hearts all over the place? Yo, Lucius, you're insane. I love you, dude. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll add you down here as soon as this show is over. I promise you. I promise you, and if I forget, remind me. <laughs> The hearts right here sorry i'm still a little bit sick here but uh this this would be cool because then it'll be treated like a handheld for sure now one thing that i would like to see the game boy uh classic have whatever if this thing even does exist down the road in the future um is the uh the screen itself <laughs> if we if we can get some backlight support on that that would be great that would be nice um as far as games i can go down the list for days uh of games that we can add to here legend of zelda Link's awakening super mario land 2 uh probably my favorite handheld super mario game out of everything uh on the uh, earlier game boy days for sure uh that game was so good the same as game was so good i'm sure we'd probably see return of samus on there um, just because of, you know, the, the relevance of Metroid coming back, uh, on these newer consoles, we've seen Samus Returns on 3DS and, um, also, you know, Prime 4 eventually coming out as well too. Ah, you could probably make a claim to put the original Mario Land in there as well. Castlevania Adventure, Tetris, the, the, the list can go on and on and there, there's just so much stuff i probably would want to do a video now now seeing this i would probably want to do a video and like break down probably games i would love to see on a game what a what a what a game boy classic would be would it have like 20 games 30 games who knows who knows but I'd love to hear from you guys, whether you're in the chat right now watching this or uh, watching this over on YouTube after the fact. Definitely leave it in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter as well. I'm going to jump into the chat before we jump into the next subject. Hoo yeah. Link's, Link's Awakening was pretty cool. Dude, dude, Link's Awakening is still my favorite Zelda game. I'm one of those weird ones. It's Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, and I think Breath of the Wild just took number three for me, to be honest with you. I really enjoyed that game. I... I love that game. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't recall many Legend of Zelda games that were not good, except Four Swords stuff. And it's weird. I, there's an audience for the Four Swords stuff. Um, even the... What's the recent one that came out after A Link Between Worlds? Even that one. Like, they're cool. They just didn't grab me. Like, I, I don't know. It, it, those were the Zelda games that I couldn't gravitate towards. Um, because you needed friends. And I, <laughs> I didn't have friends who played that game. <laughs> Uh, Triforce Heroes, thank you, Twin World. By the way, Twin World, how the hell are you doing, dude? Joe with music while you're talking about this? Nah. <laughs> I don't want to get copyright strikes up in here. Well, he's Wacko Warner. That, I, I am. From, from the earpiece I received another rumor, Joe is currently wearing no pants. This is a lie. I can confirm I'm wearing jeans, okay? Let's, listen, listen. I come prepared. I come well-dressed. I got I, I come prepared for this show. I don't even know why I'm wearing these headphones right now. There's no music playing. But I'm wearing jeans. I am wearing jeans, all right, sir? Enough of these rumors about me not wearing pants. Glad I wore pants to the stream today. Jeez. <sighs> all right, let's move on, guys. <laughs> Woo, this is going down south real quick. Uh-oh, I lost my chat. Where's my chat? Guys, I can't see you. I can't. All right, there we go. You guys are back. What up? 
Up next, coming by way of, I believe, Nintendo Wire is where I grabbed this from. Square Enix reveals why the Secret of Mana remake isn't coming to Switch. Which, those of you know, Secret of Mana uh, is getting remade for the um, for PS4 and PS Vita. And it comes to surprise that it isn't coming on Switch. But this is one of those games that I feel like is okay that we don't get a remake on the Switch. Plus... It's on here. It's on the SNES Mini, so if you did luck out and get one <laughs> of an SNES Mini, then I think you guys are good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it would be cool if we got it. If we don't, it's not the end of the world. But here we go. Red Bull Games have published an exclusive interview with Secret Amana producer Masa Masaru Oyamada. I hope I said that right. The game is coming out in 2018 for the PlayStation 4, PC, and PS Vita. However, the Nintendo Switch has been left out. Oyamata explained that development for the game began before Nintendo's latest platform was announced, hence why a Switch version wasn't announced. Oyamata says they will continue to listen to fans. And I feel like people have been pretty loud about this. Uh, it might have died out by the time of me speaking about this, but I feel like I saw a lot of people about a week and a half ago talking about this very thing. Um, development for the title began before the Switch was announced, so it's definitely beyond our expectations to see the level of anticipation for the release on the platform gr grow this much. In terms of our current circumstance, we are unable to immediately state that this will become available on the Switch, but we will hope to continue listening to the various requests from our fans. The only thing I will say that s seems really weird um that they didn't even begin to like think about oh let's get this onto the switch is the fact that the secret of mana collection the original games are on the eShop from japan on the nintendo switch like they have the they have three games in a collection for the switch on the japan eShop. i think it's like 80 bucks there if that if the currency in my head translates um that uh if if that pricing sounds right i think it was like eighty thousand yen eighty thousand or eighty sorry not eighty thousand eighty hundred yen which i think is eighty dollars in our currency but yeah three games on there they have like the game boy stuff and then they have the super nintendo one um that you can pick up all together so it's weird that they did that and not think of adding this even after the switch was announced you know i, I mean i guess per the production of the game was far enough in development that they couldn't go back to like change things around no idea but really weird that that happened again want to hear from you guys but uh i think joe needs le leather pants says ryan well maybe one day maybe one day ryan <laughs> i'm just here to cause mass chaos x-force yo you are mass chaos. Isn't Lost Fear a Secret of Mana quasi remake? Not entirely. It does pull inspiration from there, sort of, kind of. Um, more so like a spiritual successor to Chrono Cross, um, Chrono Trigger type uh, games with a lot of Final Fantasy references in there. But it's its own game. Um, it takes. It's actually sort of you can kind of think of it as like a semi-sequel to i am setsuna the same game that tokyo rpg made prior to this so um that i am setsuna was their first game and now this is their their follow-up to i am setsuna but it's not a full-on it's not a sequel in terms of like story to i am setsuna it's its own thing uh which that game came out this week on the eShop for japan i didn't know the game was coming <laughs> I, like, I saw the demo i was like oh I'm going to play the demo at some point. I, this is really early. This is cool. And the game came out officially in Japan, but we're getting it in January. I have it pre-ordered through the Square Enix website, which I just might end up canceling that and downloading it digitally when it comes out, like I did with I Am Setsuna, unless something cool comes with it, but I didn't see anything other than the game coming out with it. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I was going to apologize for spam, but I got the timeout. It's all good, dude. It's all good. Just... I want to be able to see what's going on in the chat. That's and that gets uh, pretty crazy. <laughs> Isn't Lost Fear? Oh, I read that. I caught up. Uh, ah, so like Torment T O N only for S O M. I confuse it. I confuse it. What's the acronym there? Uh, it would be cool. Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> oh man. All right. Cool. So 
let's move on to some Pokemon news. Ah, but yes, so this comes by way of Polygon. This is a Polygon article I pulled this from. Yes, it is. Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon beef up Alola's legendaries with new Z-moves. So, there was a video. Pokemon Company posted up. It's there. I can't play it. I don't want to get dinged uh, for a copyright strike. I mean, not a, co a copyright claim, sorry. Uh, so, we're going to talk about it here. But, in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Ultra Strong Legendary Monster and Necrozma get some fancy, familiar new forms. The upcoming Nintendo 3DS games. The latest trailers introduced two versions of the, Poke of the Pokemon. Excuse me. Which look a lot like last year's starring pair of legendary Pokemon. Uh, yes. <laughs> so Leo and, and Lunala have been consumed by Necrozma. So Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon feature Duskmane, Necrozma, and Dawn Wings Necrozma, respectively. Both Pokemon appear to be a combination of the eponymous monster and so and in Sogaleo and New Nala. Jeez, that name, like, I always fumble on every time. We know from Pokemon Sun and Moon, these forms of Necrozma even have the same typing as Sogaleo and New Nala. So consider these to be souped up tank takes on Sun and Moon's most recognizable legendaries. That was a lot of the same thing. Um, each monster will have a new unique Z-move to strong special attacks that are activated using special items. Dustmane Necrozma can use Searing Sun Rays Smash, while Dawn Wing Necrozma has Menacing Moon Rays Maelstorm. But let's let's get to why we're really here. The Rotom Dex, the cute sentient Pokemon that that was a friendly omnipresence in Sun and Moon, now gets its own special Z powers. If you befriend it, which duh, of course you will, <laughs> the Rotom Dex will be able to assist teams in battles and grant new f access to new features, including the Roto Loto, which doles out useful items and even Pokemon eggs. That's pretty dang handy, and that's November 17th. We're going to be expecting to see that. So that is something, that's three new things that are brand new. Two new Ultra ultra Z, uh, sorry, it's two new Z moves in Ultra Sun and Moon, and um, more Rotom functionality, which I feel like Rotom was like the, the, the I, don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but he was just kind of there all in the, uh, in the previous games. So... It's kind of cool that, you know, Rotom's finally getting some stuff, because Rotom was a Pokemon, is a Pokemon, so why the hell not be able to get some, get some cool things going for him? Shoutouts to Rotom. Come on, man. Uh, Tor Torment of, T oh, going back to the other one. I'm jumping back into the chat here. Torment Tides of Numenara. Only for, only for Secret of Mana. Sorry. Blah. Yes. There you go. <laughs> uh, my brain was not putting two and two together there. Sorry about that. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, Z moves with mold breaker effects. Oh, man, Magia, what's going on? Rip Mimic you. Yo, a moment of silence for Mimic you. Okay, we're good. Mimic you, Mimic you is the devil, all right? It's the devil. I'm not messing with Mimic you. Mm -mm, nah. After that, that trainer, the, the island trial battle in that spooky uh, grocery store, nope, I'm good. I'm quite all right. I'm not messing with that. I don't mess with that. Mm -mm. <sighs> here we go but something i will mess with is if you go to the uh go to nintendo's website and i will give you the link as soon as i can read that from here but it looks like it's super mario.nintendo.com you can grab a free song of the theme song sung by pauline for mario super mario odyssey and the music video is there it's great it's amazing it's everything you want it to be and the song is super catchy so they have a bite-sized version of it down uh for download for free and then you can watch the music video on that website as well that's just a quick tidbit um something pretty cool we're gonna get into some sonic news here by nintendo wire which uh which take it for what you will sonic 3d blast not one of my favorite sonic games it might have actually been the last sonic game i played on genesis before i fell out of love with him until sonic adventure battle 2 and then fell back out of in love with him until now with Sonic Mania. But uh, while it's definitely not the most friendly, uh, fondly remembered Sonic game from the early 90s, Sonic 3D Blast for the Genesis and Saturn saw t Sega take speed, the speedy hedgehog in an entirely different direction. Played from an isometri isometric perspective and swapping fast movement for deliberate exploration, it definitely divides opinion to this day. 
to perhaps bridge this gap of opinion, John Burton, one of the game's original developers and a founder of Traveler's Tales, has announced that the game will be getting a director's cut of sorts. Check out the announcement video below, which we can't watch here, but... On top of ease, ease of use improvements to Sonic's handling and a few bug fixes, Burton will be patching in a playable Super Sonic and hopes to make a, the cut level editor available to all players. The Sonic 3D Blast Director's Cut will be available as a free download patch to the original game. Be sure to follow the developer's Game Hut YouTube channel for more details, as, uh, more updates as they come. So... Sonic 3D Blast coming out of nowhere, coming out of obscurity of the Sega Genesis and the Sega Saturn days. I had the, I rented the Genesis version because I wasn't, um, I, I didn't buy it. Uh, I played it, we rented it, and I was like, oh, okay, this is all right. This is different. This is not the Sonic I remember. And there's just a lot of things that were super clunky about it that I remember, um, which it just didn't click with me that day. Uh, in you know that game so i i fell out of love with sonic for a while and we'll just leave it there sonic knuckles and sonic 3 my favorite sonic games oh man sonic mania though sonic mania is where it's at for sure uh, going back to uh the pokemon news real quick just catching up with chat here i'm happy about more rotom functionality because i hear one of those are egg hatching ones yes yes which is pretty dope like I wonder how this is going to work. Are you going to be able to break that system somehow? Like, someone out there is going to be able to become, like, a Rotom breeder. Sonic the Bedhog. Damn, Savage Twin World. Uh, those tabs, Joe, so many. <laughs> Don't worry. We breeze through these tabs real quick, Blue. Don't worry. All right. Um, whew. We got, what, two more? Two more things in the pipeline, and then we'll head to the eShop drop. But here we go. Fire Emblem Warriors. This comes by Gamatsu. Fire Emblem Warriors adds World of Holy War heroes. Tell to you. Diadre? Diadre. And Sigurd. Man, these are, these are some weird names. But they're from the Genealogy of War. And... Oh yeah, here we go. Three new heroes from Fire Emblem. Genealogy of the Holy War are now available in the Fire Emblem Heroes uh, alongside the, a new World of Holy War Paralogue story Nintendo announced. So that update should be out by now, um, both iOS and Android. And they've got a neat little trailer, which, again, we will not watch because Joe doesn't want copyright claims on these shows. <laughs> Whew, with that said, oh, did I just screw something up? We're back at Nintendo Life for one more Pipeline article, and then we'll jump into the eShop drop. But... Nintendo Virtual Boy could be getting some new software, and I like the virtual insanity, the Jamiroquai reference right here. Shout out to Jamiroquai. Come on, man. Come on, man. Damian McFerrin, and this was uh, posted on Monday, so we're, you know, this is a weekend review wrap-up show. It's what we do here. It could be like what you missed. But here we go. Nintendo Virtual Boy may have gone down in history as the company's grandest folly, but it's clear that there are many fans out there who feel it didn't get a fair crack of the whip. I don't know about that. <laughs> but anyway, Team VU Engine is a group of Virtual Boy enthusiasts who want to resurrect the failed console with a series of new homebrew titles. A Patreon crowdfunding game uh, campaign has been established to facilitate this endeavor with the ultimate objective being to raise enough funds so the team can work full-time on creating new games for Gunpei Yokoi's misunderstood masterpiece. <laughs> oh, man. As well as making tools which, in which will encourage other developers to support the system. We're in this weird renaissance right now. Before I go into this uh, whole synopsis here, we're in this weird renaissance of, like, ret uh, repros and, re and retro homebrews. There's games being made for NES again, SNES, um, it, Genesis games. Like, there, there's a whole community out there of people making new games for these old retro consoles, which is great. It's amazing. I hope <laughs> I hope the Virtual Boy can can get some love, some proper love, if that's the case, because I remember playing the Virtual Boy. I remember playing Wario Land specifically at a Toys R Us, and I tried it out, and I forced myself to think that it was cool. And I know it, was, it, it just didn't something didn't seem right. And I know that. And that was the first time I can recall in like the history of me as a child playing video games, I was like, 
do I think this is cool? Do I think this is not? Like, d- d- would I really want to play this? I can't take this anywhere. It's not like I can carry it with me and play the games. Like, I have to be sitting in here looking at this, like, through the visor, the headset, playing this game. No. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyway, um, sound off on your thoughts in the chat while I finish reading the synopsis here. I want to know what you guys think. But... The ultimate goal is nothing less than to become full-time independent game developers and release regular new high-quality virtual bike games, plus even better tools to create your own. We want to engage this amazing community to closer collaborate on bringing new high-quality homebrew software up to the Virtual Boy. Everybody can conv- contribute in some way to make this possible. If not through code, assets, media coverage, or such, you can lend a hand through monthly monetary donations. With your support, we want to further improve the VU engine and create full, gra- full games with it. Furthermore, we aim to make the engine even more accessible to other developers by completing the documentation, creating tutorials, and building new tools. Through this campaign, we ra- we hope to raise enough monthly donations to be able to work less on our jobs and instead spend that precious time working on cool Virtual Boy stuff. It would be absolutely incredible if we were able to turn our passion into a part-time or even full-time job. So they apparently have a Patreon. Let's shout them out if we can find it here. Um, they didn't even link it on the channel, did they? Ah, here we go. Let's see. And this is patreon.com slash let's pull up my notes here so patreon.com slash view engine and let that zoom in settle in that autofocus thank you very much um patreon.com slash view engine i'm gonna throw that out in the uh in the chat as well for you guys i'll put the links to all this stuff in the description down below as well but let's see what's our uh, what's their breakdown here Let's see. Backers for one dollar a month per f- or more. Thank you for support. Let's us give back. Let's y- us give you back a little bit with stuff like sneak peeks of upcoming projects through Patreon only posts, as well as the backer badge on Planet VB. Um, Five dollars or more super backer. Everything above plus we'll be able to include your name in the credits of our future games. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Um, buy, uh, you'll also, you'll be on top of the line to buy upcoming complete inbox releases of our games at 5% off. That's pretty dope. That's cool. Beta tester for $15 or more. Everything above with 15% off all co- upcoming, all of our upcoming complete inbox releases. Plus you'll get regular builds of our work in progress games. So if you have a virtual boy, that's pretty dope. That's cool. See these guys. Okay. This is a cool Patreon. All right. 25. Um, you get to vote on what we work on next. Okay. Game developer for 125. Any higher amount. you, We will create your game for you. Whoa. That's, in te- that's something else. Okay. That's new. <laughs> wow. Okay. And there you guys have it. That is in that. See? They got really creative with this. Okay. Uh, Virtual Boys I've seen on Amazon, probably. Like, I haven't looked anywhere else, but I've done quick Amazon searches on Virtual Boys, and I've seen them for, like, two, three hundred dollars on, on there. Um, <laughs> would I, would I go out and buy a Virtual Boy and try their games? If someone says they're good enough, then, then... Let then let's see. Waiting for Joe to donate one hundred and twenty six dollars. <laughs> you guys want me to do this? Yo, are we gonna be a game Bo- a Virtual Boy channel right now? Are we gonna do this? See, if I had a Virtual Boy, I don't have a Virtual Boy. I would probably try to like get an, an early in game thing and be like, hey, dude, can I do a video on this? Or we'll stream it live or something like that. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, people that have Virtual Boys out there. Let me know if you guys plan on plan on backing this. The concept, don't get me wrong, the concept is really, really cool. And the fact that they want to go and do these, I know there will probably be an audience for this. And that is so dope. The, 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 like the tiers are great. They're amazing. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have a virtual boy <laughs> and I know they're, they, you know, halted production pretty early. So there's, n- there's not as many as you would think that there are out unless, you know, people a lot of people are selling them um and i'm sure there's a lot of collectors that are keeping them in the box not playing them because of the value of the uh of their devices and whatnot 
down the road for sure. Uh, I'm to- I'm torn between this, but yes, this pa- this Patreon itself, like the perks, are pretty damn cool. So I want to catch up with you guys. We're gonna drop out of the pipeline in a minute here and go into the eShop drop. But uh, here we go. What do you guys have to say? Let's see. Bum bum bum. Blue. <laughs> um, Lucia says, "I thought no one in the U.S. remembered Jamiroquai." Yo. Yo, stop. Hold on. Wait, I got I, I gotta have a moving room to do this. Oh come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Has he done anything since? Yo. Shout out shout outs. I don't know. I hope he didn't do anything bad. If not, I take back my shout-outs to Jamiroquai. Um, <laughs> today, we removed the stands from the Virtual Boy. Now you can carry it and stop being lazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have no use for any VR-type uh, consoles or games, says Lucius. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, we we did a PSVR stream when it first... Um, uh, like, that first weekend that it came out. This was last year, actually. Before we changed everything to just being Nintendo, uh, Nintendo games and being a Nintendo channel, um, we did do PSVR and it was cool, but there weren't a lot of games. Like the last game I had played was Resident Evil Seven, um, and there weren't a lot of games that like piqued my interest. I was like, oh, this looks cool, but these are all experiences. And don't get me wrong, they're they're cool, they're they're very cool. Um, but some of them just like were very clunky and wonky too. Like half the time there's this one game and I can't remember the title of it now, but you're starting off in like a space station and you're going into a place and then it goes through the tutorials and my hands did with the, uh, PS4, uh, what do they call them? The wands for the PS4, the move, the move controllers, they weren't syncing up. And I was like, all right, well, that was a waste of $40 on that game. Like, it was like, dude, come on. And I tried restarting it several times and it just didn't go. But then you have games like experiences like Batman Arkham VR, which are freaking amazing. And Resident Evil 7, a full $60 game that you can play entirely in VR. And it was actually really, really good. And then that was kind of it for me. I was like, all right, well, I packed this up and I put it in one of my bins because I just didn't have a use for it. And then every now and again, we'll have like a family member come by and they want to try it out and we've taken it out. But other than that, it's gone back into the bin. So, I mean, I can't blame you there, Lucius, for sure. Uh, what if it's free? (laughs) In fact, when Bethesda announced VR for fallout four, I let them know the develop. I, I let them know the development on it was lost on me. Not that one person makes a difference. Hey, but if you're voicing your opinion, there's probably more people out there with similar opinions. You might not be the only one that thinks that way, dude. Uh, I'm waiting for Joe for donate 126 on this. Um, props to the company. I just don't like wearing headsets. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, the Virtual Boy, everything, well, this, and again, this probably was because I was using the demo unit. The, the thing was like on a tripod stand right and then it was the red headset and you had to put your face on it to play it with the controller i don't even remember if it had like a strap to put on your back to actually like lift it up and play it because i think you were looking down at whatever it was uh whatever was being projected on the thing i could be totally wrong about that (sighs) but yeah uh lol innovation me thinking about how this goes up on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> this will just be edited um, after the fact. I edit all this stuff. Uh, Juwan VR, please. Oh, please, no. No, no Juwan VR. Draco, what's going on? All right, so that's going to end it for the pipeline. I barely heard that, but okay. I think I think I heard it enough to keep going, and we're going to... Here we go! To the eShop drop, and that's because the headphone piece was... Not going there. Booyah. <sighs> Oof, my head is hurting. Sorry, I'm still... I'm, like, either getting over being sick or getting sick. I have no idea. But, yes, we are in the eShop drop every Thursday. And sometimes on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, games drop on the on the Nintendo eShop. So, we're going to go through everything that came out this past week. Uh, first up, 88 Heroes, 98 Heroes Edition for $29.95 on the Nintendo Switch. 
Um, you could buy both physical and digital here. That is from Rising Star Games, which I feel like I might have played one of their games on the channel here for Nintendo Spotlight before. Um, which is interesting. The reason it's 88 Heroes, uh, of course, you get 10 additional heroes in the 98 Heroes Edition, but um, they're not really, like, all the superheroes are busy or something to that extent, so you have to save the world with these nobodies that don't have superpowers or anything like that. So, um, yeah, Earth is being attacked and whatnot, but that's pretty much the premise of that. Tiny Barbarian DX, $29.99. We did a Nintendo Spotlight on that. That is physical and digital from Nicholas Inc., Kabu uh, Toho Kabuto Burst Battle 5, $29.99 on the eShop. We did another, uh, this is by NIS and Cube Type. Um, we did a Nintendo Spotlight on this as well. All those are up on YouTube. Neon Chrome for $14.99 on the Switch, digital only. This is from 10 Tons Limited. And it's a twin stick shooter. Uh, I've seen this on other consoles before as well. So this might be a port over, which is dope. Getting more, of the, getting more of these awesome indie games out here. Uh, same with the Flame and Flood, complete edition for $14.99, digital only, from Curb Digital and Molasses Flood. And this is a survival type game, top down. Uh, oh, what was this? Here we go. Is this Wolverblade? This is Wolverblade, which we did an hour Nintendo Spotlight on for $19.99 on the Nintendo eShop from Darkwind Media and fully illustrated, um, digital only. And this is an awesome beat em up game. If beat em ups are up your alley, the animation is great. The uh, character, mo the characters look awesome. Uh, they they put a lot of work into this game. The lore for like you know the locations you go to to the weapons that you use. They they put lore into everything. They do also historic research on some of these weapons as well. So there is some history to it as you're playing this game as well, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you you can learn a lot from this game. So, but overall, it is a very very awesome beat 'em up and uh pretty lengthy at that. I thought I was gonna be able to breeze through it. Nope, nope. We're we're only on level three. But that's Wolver, Wolverblade. Volgar the Viking uh, came out previous the previous week on Switch. It's out on the Wii U as well for $9.99. Yono and the Celestial Ele Elephants, $14.99 on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, this is another one of those isometric view uh, RPG puzzle games um, that has that elephant that we saw during the Nintendo Direct going around, traveling all these different worlds and everything. This is by Neckbolt and Plug In Digital as well. Uh, art style looks adorable. This really caught me. Like I was like, oh man, it's it. Uh, people are relating it to a better version of Ocean Horn, which we played a little bit of Ocean Horn, and it had some Legend of Zelda vibes to it for sure. Um, wasn't a full on Z Zelda game, but it did have those vibes. Um, what's another eShop drop without a Neo Geo game? King of Fighters ninety five for seven ninety nine on the Nintendo Switch. Hamster Co. There you go. And uh, we got some stuff on sale as well. So some price drops. The Bridge is $7.49. Uh, Elminage Original for the 3DS, $9.99. Infinite Mini Golf, $10.49. Swipe is $0.99. Cents. Galaxy Flash, $99. Like a lot of stuff here. So check that out as well. You don't want to miss those. Uh, the Bridge, I would probably say out of all these games right here, The Bridge is probably the one to pick up that's on sale right now. Uh, it's a puzzle game. We did a Nintendo Spotlight from it. Uh on it and i liked it i liked it we almost beat the first portion of that game and then it does a mirror mode and there's just there's a lot to it it's actually really nice um and the art style is pretty dope uh some more games we forgot here little adventures on the prairie 299 3ds motor rotor 599 on the wii u legend of hero tonma 599 on the wii u digital champ battle boxing 599 on the wii u and that is probably me trying to search for it Whew! And that was the eShop drop. We're going to finish off with my Nintendo, and then we got a video, another Fizume moment of the day uh, to close out with us. But you can get Yoshi, new, Yoshi's New Island for 20% off using your gold coins, 30% off Golden Sun, Sin and Punishment, 30% off Poke Park, 20% off. That's been on for a while. Dylan's Rolling Western and Metroid are still up there as well for 3DS, and you can get those. And still a lot of stuff. You can use your gold coins for. I have too many, but I also have a, a good chunk of these games, so I have all these coins sitting here that I can't use. 
Oh man, Pokemon Golden Sun. <laughs> it's a tie-in, actually. The 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 the, the uh, Golden Sun crew can't, came to destroy all the Pokemon. Oh man! And before we go, we're gonna catch up in the chat one last time, and then we'll jump into some more video games for the live stream, folks. But uh, you got saved in Metopia yesterday, anyone? Oh, Draco! Yeah, he was there. He was there. Double take. Oh man, 3DS will never die, yo. At this rate, yeah, Nintendo's been showing showing support strong for it. Um, right now, we don't really know what games, um, what other games we're getting for 2018, other than what they've shown in the direct so far. And most of it, from my memory, has only been Switch games. Like Switch is on my brain, but I know that there's still games coming out for the 3DS. We had that gem, that sleeper hit right there in Monster Hunter Stories that became a full playthrough on this channel, as <laughs> out of nowhere really really dug it that was that's that's up there one of my favorite games of 2017 so far is that game um i've been trying to think of like out of all the games we've played and the games that i've played off camera like trying to do like a quote unquote awards show <laughs> instead of the grammys calling them the joeys and each each category gets their own joey so that might be like an end of the year thing i don't know i'd, I'd figure i'd throw it up there <laughs> Oh man, the best Pokemon game yet! <laughs> oh, Monster Hunter Worlds for 3DS, yo, the 3DS would explode. High quality. <laughs> All right, and before we go, we've got a segment brought back here in um, Fizzme moment of the day, and what this used to be was Reggie Fizzme has tons of memes out there on the uh, out there on the interwebs. And he's also been known for saying, having some popular sayings. So before we go, I'm going to turn up the audio here for you guys so we can watch this video and close out the show the proper way. This one comes from the Nintendo World Championships, which happened last Saturday, uh, a week, uh, weekend of Comic-Con. And I had a blast. I didn't get to go to the World Championships because I was too busy being at Comic-Con. And Reggie sort of announced a game <laughs> and you'll understand in a minute here but here we go reggie we love you take Since care guys 2017 nintendo has the greatest fans in the world the nintendo spirit of fun competitive gaming thrives in everyone who's attending the event in person and in the millions more watching on nintendo's twitch and youtube channels and on dxp we've got some great competitors lined up and I can't wait to see how they handle the current and classic Nintendo games we're going to throw at them. I'm sorry I can't be there with you in person, but I'm extremely busy working behind closed doors on the top secret, highly anticipated. Congratulations to all of our qualifiers and good luck to everyone competing. Might be the dirtiest thing that's ever happened. Ever. But Reggie, we love you regardless, nonetheless. We'll find out what game or games that they're working on. That they had to do that to us. So dirty, so dirty. But guys, that has been that Nintendo show for October 13th. For October 14th, actually, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I've been your host, Joe. You can find us here on Twitch.tv slash Joe After Work every Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sundays and Mondays as well. Um, we stream usually from 7.30 Eastern Time all the way to midnight. Sometimes we go in overtime. We have also a few other shows that we do here on this channel. We have Nintendo Spotlight where we showcase a couple games a week uh, that have been released on the eShop. We showcase them here. Give devs shout outs. Have a good time in the chat. We also do our long play series, Playing With Power, where it's full playthroughs, full walkthroughs, whatever you want to call them. We do it here. We play the entire game. Uh, we don't 100% things, but we do play the entire story portion of video games. And this show, that Nintendo show. And there's going to be more to come down the road. Don't want to spoil anything else. But I have more in the pipeline that I'm working on trying to get together. And I'll see you guys next time. So if you enjoyed this, give it a like, share it with your friends, let them know what I do here. Play video games after work. We talk about them here on that Nintendo show. And if you can, if you're over on iTunes, give this give this podcast a rating. Uh, 
whatever whatever star rating you guys think i i don't care one star two star three star four star five star if there was a six star i would say six star but there isn't there's only five so there's that sub over on youtube as well lets me know that i'm doing something right here and i'll see you guys next time so with that take care love y'all